Never Change World. Life Changes Network presents a show about everything. This is Life Changes with Filippo with unforgettable, ever insightful conversations that captivate our fascination and insatiability for the real, inspiring moments of real life journeys. This is a conversation that matters as we, as one, strive for higher planes of existence and a better understanding of our true selves and the world in which we live, always remembering life changes. This is radio like you've never felt before with tonight's guest. Executive producer Mark Skelton, and now your host, our MC, the master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. Ciao, everyone, and uh, thank you, Mark, and happy birthday, Mark. <laughs> uh, this is uh, this is exciting, actually. You know, this is exciting. Uh, it's actually our producer uh, Mark Lejeur's uh, birthday in two days, and so we decided this would be like his uh, birthday show. And uh, we said, "Who would you like as a guest?" And uh, as uh, as you know, your birthday guest kind of thing. And he chose Mark Skelton, who's uh, not only a friend, he's an executive producer, and he also was the producer of this show. And it uh, was a great choice because it's been a party here ever since uh, that decision was made. And and Mark uh, Skelton said yes. And, and we've just been uh, celebrating and having uh, dinner together here. We're going to have cake afterwards. It's just, it's just a lot of fun. And it's interesting that all these years uh, later, because uh, uh, Mark started off uh, producing with us when we first got started, and now he's on to uh, other exciting things that we'll talk about. But it's interesting how how uh, we've not only remained friends, but we've supported each other's projects, and how we are um, we are envisioning such great things not only for ourselves and uh, um, each other, but but. Uh, but so many other people that we're involved in, and it's great to come together again to share what it is that we're doing and how and how we see things changing. And it's interesting because I was thinking, especially maybe because I was thinking about um, uh, this show and and the kind of producers that that I have that we are in in Mark and Dorothy and 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 in Mark Skelton actually and in 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 Lee Waterworth actually who um is going to be joining us for the party a little later and so many other people that are starting to put out some really great information and starting to produce some really great films and it's interesting cuz I get to see uh so so much in the making but but so what am I trying to say they are so different than than some of the the people producers executives that I have known when I first started in this business way at the beginning and it was interesting to be reminded of that as I was getting ready for this show about a week ago I had lunch with a friend and um he's he's somebody in this business who knows a, a lot of people and one particular person that he knows uh, actually makes and breaks careers um, and he uh, he's uh, friends and and works with some of the biggest stars with the biggest names that everybody around the world knows. Um, and it's interesting that this friend of mine said that he ran across an actor that was really nice person, um, had looks, had talent, had smarts, had a great heart, and that he brought this person to this person this other person he brought this actor to this other person um in the hopes that he could help them and um this person asked the actor what he thought about his work and he said that he thought it was part of the old he thought that um he could do it a little differently perhaps and that he could um maybe help change the consciousness of the world uh, instead of telling people to do certain things the way he tells them to do. And this person said afterwards to this friend of mine, that kid will never work in this town again or ever. And I thought, wow, that's the kind of, of arrogance um, that, that has been running Hollywood or used to or some of it. Um, not everybody's like that. I've met other producers who are not like that at all, but the, um, that person will never work in this town. Maybe, maybe this kid was was not did not know how to say what he wanted to say. But maybe, and maybe he shouldn't have said it. Maybe, he, maybe he was tactless. But maybe he had something to offer that this person could have learned from. And 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 I don't know. It just seemed like 
that's kind of it just seems sad to me so then then i had a personal experience i've had a lot of personal experiences around this but um just a couple days ago i was at a hollywood party and i ran into a producer that i didn't know but i knew of because we have mutual friends and so i went up to him and i said hi i'm filippo and he doesn't know me and he doesn't owe me anything and i didn't want anything from him and i said uh, so and so's our mutual friends and we're both good friends with this other person and uh, i said you know i just saw your work blah 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 and he said that's nice and walked away now not everybody has to like me. Maybe I remind him of his brother or his mother or his father. And, and, or maybe he was busy thinking of something. Maybe he was angry about something. And I, maybe I interrupted him. But there, at that point, there were not that many people left at the party. And he, there was nothing else he had to do. But he just didn't care to talk to me. And that's fine. Um, but it was just, I just kind of got this air, like he rolled his eyes, he put his nose up and like, that's nice, and walked away. And I got, I got a feeling like, okay, I'm not young enough. I'm not pretty enough for him. I'm not whatever enough, whatever. And all I wanted to say was what I, what I liked about his work. Not an hour later, I was talking to an acquaintance of mine who's a vice president of NBC. And he saw me talking to him. All of a sudden, he came up and said, oh, so so now who's this friend again? Who is this friend that's our mutual friend? Because, you know, because uh, um, uh, I know and, and, and you look like you know. And all of a sudden, I was important because I was talking to the vice president of NBC. And I thought, wow, it's that kind of arrogance that has been running rampant in this city. And maybe, just maybe, we have new producers new executives uh, that are ready to step in the places uh, uh, where some of these people are. And maybe, just maybe, they're going to be doing it with more heart, with more consciousness, um, uh, with more light, with more love. And maybe um, we will have a whole different kind of Hollywood here very shortly. So with that, I'd like to uh, help usher that in as we all do here at Life Changes, by inviting our guest, Mark Skelton, to be on the show in just a moment, right after this. Clean water is not enough. Reverse osmosis, distilled water, and most bottled waters are devoid of naturally occurring minerals. They are acidic, unstructured, and hard to absorb, and rob minerals from the body. Ionways ionizers produce a super abundant supply of powerful antioxidants in each glass. Ionized water has a reduced molecular cluster size and a negative charge, hydrating you up to six times better. Water from an Ionways ionizer will help you restore your body to its natural pH balance, boosting your vitality. An ionized water more effectively flushes acidic toxins from within your body. Drink the healthiest water available today. Ionways Water Systems, their water changes everything. To learn more about Ionways Water Systems and how you can own one today, visit our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com and click on our sponsor page. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with your host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can visit us online via Twitter and Facebook and at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. And I, I'm, I'm so excited because this is a man, uh, our guest, who, who can make me laugh. Not a lot of people make me laugh. I like to laugh, so it's not like I don't want to. But um, even when I don't want to, actually, this guy can make me laugh. And uh, it's, it's a pleasure knowing him and his family and, and getting to work with him and, and, and seeing him do so many beautiful things out there in the world. Our guest is uh, Mark Skelton, who's an executive producer, and he has done so much, worked with multi-million dollar corporations and with uh, private individuals and uh, most recently uh, he turned his attentions to the uh, Al Gore 
uh, current TV network, and he worked on uh, For the Love of Skype, which uh, became an award-winning uh, two-part documentary, uh, it, it thanks in part to his work there. And he also uh, most recently uh, acquired uh, the option um, uh, or optioned the rights to the life story and, and world-renowned book about Peace Code Pilgrim. He has co-written the screenplay and is currently producing the feature-length uh, movie based on her life. Now, before he says a word, because as soon as he does, then I'll never be able to say a word again for the next hour because he has got so many things to say. I, I want to take a minute. And, and, and put out there into the universe as if this already happened and it was good and we're looking back at it as a way of manifesting what we hope, to, uh, what we see as a vision. So I'm going to start off by saying, Mark Skelton, thank you for being on the show. We know you're so busy, especially after having just won the Oscar last night for Peace Pilgrim. How does that feel? It feels amazing, Filippo. Um, but I have to say, I didn't do it alone. It was a team effort. The uh, Last night, as you saw, I only got to uh, thank 27 people. Apparently, <laughs> it's the longest thank you. The music came yeah, on and I, they still I, couldn't the, get you up. Two security guards couldn't lift me. <laughs> I'd, I'd been training for this for six months. I knew if I, if I just, if, you know, dead weight, if you just, if you just act like you're a bag of cement, you're all, it's almost, I learned this in the 99% Occupy protests. You just, you just basically slump down like a bag of cement and it's, it, no matter how big they are, no matter how strong, they cannot move you. I managed to thank 27 people. It was a 16 minute thank you. And, uh, or as I call it, a, a, an expression of appreciation because it really was a team effort like every movie should be. Uh, what was the, uh, who did you enjoy working with the most on the film? Uh, I'd have to say my masseuse <laughs> because uh, I was so stressed throughout the whole shoot at the end of every night, at the end of every day uh, is a lovely man. Um, he just, he lives in Santa Monica has amazing hands and uh, he would de-stress me literally. Uh, so I was ready for the next day, but Meryl was okay. You know, she's a pro. She turns up, she's never late. She usually knows her lines and, um, you know, it took a while, a little bit of coaching, but she, she grasped the character eventually. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's good working with uh, professionals. So if you haven't seen the movie, the movie is Peace Pilgrim. Meryl Streep is in the lead role as Peace Pilgrim. And actually... Um, Can I just add one thing? But of course. Because we shouldn't take... A lot of people are tricked by this because they think we actually used CGI to make... Meryl, the actress, look younger as they did in the uh, the case of Benjamin Button, right, with <laughs> Brad Pitt. But what we actually did was we uh, we we actually employed Meryl Streep's daughter, Grace Gummer, right, and she doesn't she takes her father's name. Her John her father's called John Gummer. I think it's Don. Uh, a Don, maybe John or Don. I'm sorry, sorry, Don. But anyway, um, the Gummers are an amazing acting family. And Grace Gummer is just looks like a young Meryl Streep. Wow. So we used Grace Gummer to play. This is just imagining now, just for any lawsuits out there. <laughs> there are no lawsuits. Yeah, I know lawsuits. They don't exist. <laughs> Not in Hollywood. No, what we're doing saying, is we're putting it out yeah, there. Just making we're it clear. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> um, no, so, so, so what we did, the amazing thing about this project was that we had Meryl Streep playing the older Peace Pilgrim. And we had Grace Gummer, the daughter, playing the pre-Peace Pilgr Peace Pilgrim Mildred, who obviously before the transformation, before she stepped out on the 1st of January 1953, she was married, she was divorced, she had a job, she had money, she had um, accessories and attachments that she had to work through. It took her a long time for her journey to get her to the point where she could step out as Peace Pilgrim and then continue walking across the country for 28 years solid until 1981. It's an amazing story. It, it is an amazing story, and I do want to talk more about it and share more with the audience. And, you know, um, a, as we're sitting here uh, visualizing this and talking about it as if it already happened, because uh, as of this particular date, um, Meryl has uh, not as of yet said yes. But, you know, it's interesting that some people um, could say, 
well, you know, why would Meryl want to do this or whatever? You know, it's interesting. I was... I was talking to actually you, you you I think you know her as well Penny Marshall right and I asked her how she got into producing and she said they just asked me someone just asked me all of a sudden she's this award winning producer because someone just asked her and I bet all the friends of that person who just asked her probably said oh you'll never get Penny to do this and she wouldn't do it and she but right mm-hmm. so you're just asking Meryl exactly. Streep. And there are a lot of um, parallels between Meryl Streep, the actress, and Peace Pilgrim, the, you know, the, uh, the, the, the character, the real-life character. Her name was Mildred Norman. They're actually both, funnily enough, Meryl Streep and Mildred's family grew up side by side to each other in New Jersey. They're from neighboring towns. Oh, really? Meryl Streep's from New Jersey, and so is Peace Pilgrim. They're both Cancerians. They, they both look very similar, right? As I mentioned, we have Grace Gummer, who is perfect to play the young version, which we could never do. If you bring in another actress, it's never quite the same. But we've even got the same DNA playing the same character wow. on film. Wow. Right? And, and, and Grace Gummer even has a sister called Mamie Gummer, who could play Peace Pilgrim's sister, Helene, who's 96 years old and still going strong and lives in New Jersey right now, not not half an hour away from Summit, New Jersey, wow. where, where P- uh, Meryl Streep and her family come from. So many parallels. That's so interesting. And, you know, now that you say that, you and I are both Cancerian, mm-hmm. and we both look similar. I wouldn't go that far, but yes. <laughs> well, that's Just check you- on the website and tell me what you think. <laughs> You can like email change. Filippo directly <laughs> with any donations you may, you may feel you need to give him a s- compensation. For for what, a facelift or something? <laughs> I would never waste your money, Filippo. You're a very handsome young man. <laughs> All right, so but if you grew your hair, you'd look just like me. I just yes, know. that's true. Yeah. I, and, and the only difference between you and I is the accent, really. Yes, you're from England and I'm from America. <laughs> um if you ever want to hear something funny, you should hear Mark do uh, uh, an American accent. But don't do it now. I Let's won. save that for for another interview. Um, so Mark is from England, and 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 you came here with this dream of of along with other things of doing this Peace Pilgrim movie. And the interesting thing is that for twenty eight years, nobody uh, nobody has been allowed to option the story rights, even though many have asked. That's and right. you come and you just say, I I'm gonna do this and they give you the rights. Or the, yes, the option the rights. The option the rights. Uh, it's an interesting story because I'd like to give full credit to the whole story and that is uh about 10 years ago my sister bought me an amazing book called the life you were born to live by dan millman who also wrote the way of the peaceful warrior and he's a big fan of peace pilgrim to the extent that he would hand out peace pilgrim pamphlets back in the late 60s at berkeley as when he was a student there Uh, and coincidentally when he was uh talking to socrates uh if you know the book you know what i'm talking about so Basically, Dan Millman writes a, pe- a passage in his book, The Life You Were Born to Live, all about service, selfless service. Wait, when you mention Socrates, that's from the other movie. That's from the, the, the yeah, other that, book. Based, based on his college days. Right, which is what called what? The, uh, the Way of the Peaceful the Warrior. The Way of the Peaceful Warrior, yeah. okay. Which is a movie as well with right. Nick Nolte playing Socrates. Right. So, cut a long story short, I read the book, I read about this paragraph, and I had this amazing vision of uh, of this this hybrid character i as soon as i thought this is like gandhi meets forrest gump right that's what i mm. when i read this paragraph actually I, that's that's great i was really I, that's what came Analogy. into my mind and and so i in that moment i had this little daydream i was living in london i was working on another film and i had no plans to come to america and no plans to come to california and i literally had this little idea daydream where I saw myself jumping on a plane, hiring a car, driving up to Northern California, a place called Copperopolis, and knocking on the door of the headquarters of the Friends of Peace Pilgrim and saying, if there isn't a movie about this woman already, there needs to be, and I would, I would like to write it. And this daydream lasted for probably 
45 seconds. I even saw myself in a motel writing the screenplay mm. of like for over two or three weeks, just like a very rough first draft, right? Mm-hmm. And I do all my research there, just get as much information and then come back and then do the rest over in your, the internet. In this your, was in the daydream, in the daydream right? Okay. But, uh, you know, daydreams are one thing, but it's interesting you should talk about manifestations and visions because it never turned out like that. It was, it, you know, that never happened. But, but the life, result. The result happened yeah. and the life journey was very different Mm -hmm. the life journey took several years that was in 2002 right like i said about 10 years ago and then i didn't come to la until 2006 on another project Mm. and i fell in love with los angeles and that's when i was realized you know that's when i thought well england at that time was very difficult to get anything financed there was a whole thing going on with the government and finance for film funding basically so i thought well if you, you know if you if you want to make movies there's no better place than hollywood so it was at that moment I made the decision to relocate, and that took a long time. And, you know, that's another story. That's another movie, actually. But we won't go into that just yet. So the bottom line was I I reintroduced myself to the book by sheer chance yet again whilst meditating. I, I had another vision pop into my mind about me reading the book. And that's, again, another funny story. But I basically tracked down um, the Friends of Peace program, contacted them. This was in 2007. And I was actually introduced by, by the Friends of Peace Pilgrim to another writer called Richard, who uh, who wrote a very good first draft or a very good second draft, but it just didn't capture the story. It just like the, it just didn't get to the point uh, where it could go. I was very impressed by it, and it was very good. But the Friends of Peace Pilgrim, uh, they basically suggested to me that we get. Um, uh, you know, we ha- take another look at the story and admit, see, you know, as the producer, obviously. Um, you know, try and find another way to tell the story. Mm. And so, um, again, this this went, this spanned over years. It, it just took a long, long time. But in that in that interim period, they signed over. They said, "What do you need from me?" And I said, "As a producer, if I'm going to make this into a movie in Hollywood, the first thing that the money men are going to say is, do you have the rights? And should you be here, actually trying to make this movie? You know, is mm. somebody else going to make it?" And so uh, I explained this to the Friends of Peace program, and they said, what do you need? And I said, well, the norm, the standard is to give a two-year um, literary rights agreement, right, to give me two years to have exclusive rights. Mm-hmm. And they said, how about five? <laughs> Which was interesting, because it's almost like they knew something I didn't know. Mm, interesting. Because, because I'm now three and a half years into that five. Mm-hmm. Because, like I say, it wasn't the, the day I got it. You know, it took right. a long time, and they wanted to get to know me. I, I went up to Copperopolis many times, and... We, I met with. So you the did end up going. Oh there. yeah, I did all and of so, that. Yeah, and I did do yeah. the research. Right, and it, you know everything happened. It just didn't happen as the daydream was yeah. was envisioned. You know, but in real time, all of those plot points were met. And you know, and that's interesting that you should say that because after this interview today, when we listen to it a year and a half from now, or whenever it is that the movie actually is made, the actress and actresses are set, mm-hmm. and, and, and the Academy Award is in your hand, and we're having this interview again in the third dimension. Um, uh, we, whether it's Meryl Streep or not, mm-hmm. and whether it's you know her daughter or not, we could end up saying something like, it ended up being so-and-so who ended up being better because... Or so Dorothy, who, who, you know, spiritual advisor that she is, Mm -hmm. as as, uh, Dorothy Donahue, also our producer, has always said that you could say something like Meryl Streep or better. Yes. Right? But that's where we come unstuck. That's come again? Because there's no one better than Meryl Streep. (laughs) So maybe I should say Filippo Voltaggio. Or better, because you do have <laughs> wait, the hair. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, so I'm there's just fibbing. I'm just kidding. But no, that's good, and that's exactly that's where I'm at right now. I'm not stuck on Meryl Streep. Yeah. I just haven't had Meryl Streep look me in the eye and say, "I don't want to do this." And there's a little voice in my head that keeps saying, "Meryl hasn't had the doesn't have the full understanding of this project." And the last thing I would want to do is meet Meryl Streep a year and a half down the road, and then Meryl say. Why didn't you try harder? Yeah, and you I know. would have done that. You, why didn't you ask? Right. Why coming back? Getting hoping Meryl Streep would knock on the door. Right. You know, I do that a lot, but right. I also do other stuff in the third time reality. In this, uh, you know, and we, and, and I'll tell you what it is. 
<laughs> Did I ask? Basically, no, but we've contacted her agent, we've contacted her publicist, we've, con- we've contacted people who, who know her two degrees away, three degrees away. You, it's, it's, the journey has been amazing. So many people, but we've never had a definite answer from Meryl Streep. I don't know if Meryl Streep's ever read the script. At least not yet, right. Exactly. And, 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 and even at this level of the show... Um, where where we are right now, uh, people still have a hard time getting to me because they don't know if they don't know me, then they don't know who you know. So they 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 try and find us on the website or whatever, and we put ourselves out there. But but there's still there's still a channel, and people even contact you about being on our show, yeah, right? Yeah. And then when they come through you, then it's like okay, Mark Skelton said this. Let's you know let's look at this person. So it it it's not that. She's not, you know, that 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 she would say no. It's it's like getting it's getting through it. So, yeah. so it's giving her the opportunity to say yes. That's how I see it. Okay, you know, I like it. I like it. Um, and and so okay. So now we've we've put out that manifestation, and so when we come back, I'd like to talk about why this is so important. Why this is so important today why somebody why did somebody walk um leave her husband her children her money and 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 just walk miles and miles across the united states how many times she zigzagged across the u.s seven times seven times canada twice and most of mexico why would somebody do that what effect did it have why do we want to look at a movie of it today and how could it help us not only today but in the kind of world that we are envisioning Mm -hmm. so when we come back we're having a conversation right now with mark skelton about the movie peace pilgrim and also later on in the show we'll tell you how you can get involved how you can get a hold of uh, mark himself or you can help bring people to the project uh, this is really exciting. So we'll talk more about that right after we do this. There are self-help seminars costing thousands of dollars guaranteeing miraculous transformations. There are compelling speakers and life-changing weekend experiences where you can walk on fire. They all deliver revelations that guarantee you'll come back for the more expensive revelations filled with even greater wonder next month on Fiji. We get addicted to positive, heartfelt, expensive theater. What we really need is a jumpstart, an awakening, someone who can give us a reminder that everything we need lies within. Through inspiration and practical knowledge, Dorothy Donahue helps people get grounded and motivated, inspired and energized. It's not just words and affirmations and the power of intention. It's a mindset brought about by a tangible, transcendental experience, an audiovisual, physical, spiritual experience that helps us realize we transform ourselves. We get tools to become the conscious co-creators of lives of unlimited potential. Find out more. Go to DorothyDonahue.com. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with our host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can hear tonight's show and all our past shows, which include luminaries such as David Wilcock, Mariel Hemingway, Giorgio Sukalos, Marcy Shymoff, and Shadow Stevens on our archive page at our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O dot com. Remember, you can also connect with us via Twitter and Facebook and now in our own community at lifechangesnetwork.com where real people come together to share real life in real time. That's lifechangesnetwork.com. We're back, and I'm Filippo, and our guest today is Mark Skelton, who has me cracking up uh, during the show, during the break, and we're, we're having so much fun. And, and this, is, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, this is what we're talking about, seeing, seeing more people have fun, living their bliss uh, while they're doing projects that, that help uh, bring bliss to a lot of other people. And actually, that's where we left off, is here we have a woman, Peace Pilgrim, who was known as Mildred something, um, and she leaves her family, she leaves her uh the the money her house everything and zigzags across the united states seven times a couple times in canada and mexico uh why did she do this why is it important 
And why do we want to see a film about it? Well, you have to put it into context, I think. Uh, firstly, she stepped out at the height of McCarthyism in 1953 when basically the whole nation, if not the, the whole Western world, was paralyzed by fear and apathy. If you think about it then, if you were considered a communist or a red, you would lose your job, you would be, uh, you, it would be completely taboo and, and people would stop talking to you overnight. It was very uh, draconian and all, uh, almost 1984. People were informing on their neighbors, their work colleagues, anyone they thought might be a communist because the fear was so strong that people were terrified that they were going to be nu nuked or you know, have a nuclear bomb dropped on them while they slept or more terrifyingly, uh, while their children were at school. You may remember the duck and cover campaign they did, which yeah. I never understood. What years was this? 1953, McCarthyism. Yeah, no, no I don't remember because right. I wasn't around. But and, That's and this what is... you say. And the... <laughs> I have photographic... You met Peace Pilgrim on her first walk <laughs> right. at the Rose Parade. You were 17 years old. <laughs> You well, walked her first five miles with the, Gump. Yeah, your name was Forrest Gump, which actually is based on Peace Pilgrim. Oh, really? That's when he, when he, one day when he just, um, and I haven't had this confirmed, it's not in the book, but in the screenplay, it was adapted, obviously, because he, in the book of Forrest Gump, because Forrest Gump's based on a book, I don't know if you know that, and yes. the book is spelt B double O K for those uh, who don't have the subtitles. <laughs> book. At home, book. Uh, but basically. Um, I thought he was spelling out I the know, title I of the book. Yeah. There you go. Uh, so now we catch up, Filippo. Come on, you need some new new <laughs> shoes, uh, just like Peace Pilgrim kids. So so basically, Forrest Gump, when he walks across the country, when he one day just gets up and leaves everything and runs across the country for many years, that's a nod to what Peace Pilgrim did for twenty eight years. Like I said, from nineteen fifty three wow. until nineteen eighty one. But the context, getting back to the context of the time, we can't understand it, right? This was a major threat. Every new, every newspaper, every radio show, every TV show was talking about the communists. The communists are coming, right? The Reds are coming. There was Korea going on, the Korean War, where the communists were moving down through Korea, and look at the situation we have now, where a country is divided because of the same threat. And, and Peace Pilgrim was actually working as a lobbyist in Washington at this time. And she was based in Philadelphia and would take the train in two or three times a week. And she would get into these heated debates with senators that would say, we need to start a, a, a comprehensive, preemptive nuclear strike, which would mean whenever we suspect a country that isn't America, that may be going pink or red, we should nuke them before they become communist. That's the only way we can stop communism. So Peace Pilgrim was wow. saying... Are you insane? Did wow. we learn nothing from Japan? You cannot go around n dropping nuclear bombs on countries with the fallout and the pollution that's wow. going to happen just willy-nilly. That's an English phrase. Just, you know, if you feel like it. And so basically, she was she was tearing her hair out. And, uh, you know, there's a, there's a very funny scene in the movie where she's told to take a hike. And she actually did. She took it literally because she was getting to a point where she was at the point of exhaustion. Wow. And she literally became the first woman in history to hike the entire Appalachian Mountain Trail with only two sheets of plastic, some dried oats and nothing else. And you know, literally the clothes on her back, no tent, nothing. And she hiked for one whole season, four months, 2,500 miles in the wilderness and survived wild bears, snakes, all kinds of, you know, literally drinking water, eating berries. She's a vegetarian, so she wasn't, she didn't take a, a bow and arrow and kill any uh, deers or anything like that. So she was living off the land, literally. And um, and when it got, when it rained, she would get under the plastic and she would make a bed of leaves. And this woman survived wow. in the wilderness, like a like a true wilderness woman, for four months and and managed the the whole from literally from north to south the entire Appalachian Mountain Trail. And that was her first foray into. Um, what you might want to call uh, notoriety or fame because she got her first radio show as a result of that. She got her first headline in a newspaper. And it, during the radio interview, she was asked, what's next? And she said, I'm going to do some optimistic hiking. Um, and, and that basically meant I'm going to walk across the country. And wow. that's when she started. That She didn't have a name for it at that point. But that it was, it was actually the reason I mentioned the Appalachian Mountain Trail is because that's when she had the big mountaintop experience where she realized that's what she was meant to do for the rest of her life. Wow. She was 44 years old. That happened in, uh, in 1952, and she stepped out on the, at the end of 1952, and she stepped out on the 1st of January 1953 at the Pasadena Rose Parade, and this is the irony of this, um, 
the guest, the, that you know, the 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 guest of honor, the master of ceremonies, whatever he's called, the man who's on the float, the person who's on the the float for that year. You know, right. I don't know if you're familiar with this. Yes, um, it was actually Nixon, president, uh, the the soon to be president Nixon, because oh, wow. he, he was the vice president. He in 1953 he was sworn in as the vice president wow. under Eisenhower. And so Peace Pilgrim jumped the queue and she ran in front of Nixon illegally and like, you know, literally went under the rope. And she was pretending to be part of the parade, handing out her leaflets, trying to get people's attention. And the police actually chased her off and were like, what are you doing? And they thought she was just some kooky, crazy old lady that was just, you know, mm. being. But then she, you know, she had this way about her and she just sort of, you know, talked very politely and smiled. And, they, you know, she never got arrested. She actually ended up have, having a lot of um, she was actually in the L.A. Times. She was on the front page of the L.A. Times the next day wow. talking about a woman walking for peace. And she was a very good publicist. She did great self PR. So that that there you go. You don't you don't even have to say anymore, though. We want you to. Uh that says exactly why this is so important today, because somebody could be doing that now or we could just be using the uh, her as an example and just be watching it. It, 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 it. It's a story that obviously needs to be tell, be, told because this is happening today. That mm. More people are, are, are needing to be aware of some of the things that are being done. That, sh- that that we might not want to. You could argue that today's environment, uh, the you know, you replace communism and with the word terrorism, oh. and you have the same dynamic. Oh. You have the same parallel. We're apathetic. Two thousand and one, the twin towers. People are terrified now. They the right people. The government can take away your rights based on their you know their, their excuse or their reasoning saying they're going to this is for your own good right, right. and that's very similar to what happened uh, during the the communist threat which lasted for decades wow. in america wow. and you know people were blacklisted and all the rest of it so just think about it now you know your rights have been taken away uh, just very slowly but surely and it's like but it's like oh but it's like this you know it's like this grandfather approach we're taking care of you it's for your own good right and that's that sort of seems to be the problem that people are just so the, the, the problem's so big the problem of terrorism is so big to get your head around it's much easier to become apathetic and just focus on your day-to-day life because let's face it if you've got a family with children and a job and your mortgage is going down the toilet then you, you know there's other things you want to focus your time on not yeah. everyone can just give everything yeah. up and walk across the country although i have to say dozens of people have since peace pilgrim did it in 1953 and there's a woman doing it right now walking to washington wow. and it's um and you know there, there's so many i mean and and there's even you know there's even um a young boy, a 12-year-old boy, just completed his first cross. He walked coast to coast, did exactly the same route as Peace Pilgrim after watching the Peace, Pro- Peace Pilgrim YouTube clip. Wow. And it was, he's, he actually he's founded a charity called The Little Red Wagon, and there's a movie coming out in about a month. Uh, which is a feature film with about him, which features Peace wow. Pilgrim. They actually sent us the script and asked us to to sign up, sign off the rights that they could use the clip from from YouTube. And obviously, we said yes because it's great for it's great for awareness. We want everyone to know about Peace Pilgrim, right? Well, uh, and right. I met Zach. I actually walked in from I walked in from Beverly Hills with my son Kingston. He was in the pram, and I met him about two or three miles outside of Santa Monica, and we all walked in as a big group and and walked under the uh, the Santa Monica Pier just as Peace Pilgrim did and just as Forrest Gump did. And we met the mayor of Santa Monica, which is uh, Bobby Shriver, and um, and a, a big group of people. And we had an amazing celebration all day there. And he, he was 12 years old and he walked across the country uh, this, with his, awesome. his mum following in a van. It's, it's inspiring, it's timely, and uh, and it's it's so you in the sense that, that, that you have you have put – so much into this like 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 most producers do but but there's something else that, that this is something that you believe in from the heart and if and if you're if you're believing this uh, in your heart and you want to know how you can uh, get more involved of course you could always go to life changes uh, with filippo.com to learn more cuz we're going to update as we go and at lifechangesnetwork.com but you can find mark skelton on facebook mark skelton s k e l t o n and it's uh, the one where the there's the image of Peace Crook Pilgrim on the timeline uh, there on Facebook. So Mark Skelton on Facebook and, and go where uh, Peace Pilgrim is on the timeline. And then in the future, there's there's a website being created right now and, and um, all kinds of groups and stuff. So as they come out, we'll be informing you. So stay tuned at Life Changes uh, with Filippo.com. We're going to break early because, as you know, Mark, um, our friend and producer, Mark Lejeur, 
steps in usually at the end for about 10 minutes and we do a wrap up uh, without the guest. But since we're all friends and since there's more we can share together and we have a great dynamic, we decided let's break early. Let's bring Mark on and keep you here and let's all have some fun together right after this. Life Changes with Filippo is a premier radio show presented by Life Changes Network, which is a company whose team has dedicated their lives not only to positive change, but to helping others observe and embrace, honor, and even celebrate their own changes, thus enabling a more positive, inspired life and helping to create a more positive and inspired world. From everyday people to corporate giants, celebrities, and children, we are here to help and to serve. With heart and experience, we bring our message and positive intent into your home or corporate office and even through appearances on your favorite shows. If you wish to learn more about Life Changes Life Coaching and a private consultation with one of us, corporate event appearances, or if you would like us to appear on your radio or TV shows, visit lifechangeswithfilippo.com and click on our representation page. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with your host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can visit us online via Twitter and Facebook and at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. Back. I am Filippo, and this is now the producer's wrap with uh, Mark Lejour. And we've uh, happily been able to keep uh, Mark Skelton on. Actually, we're going to get to keep you all night and party and have a good time. But in the meantime, uh, let's have some uh, fun now. We have producers. More fun. Past and present. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It's good to be back. <laughs> good to have you on. It's been, uh, it's been quite a journey with this show and, and watching it evolve since you were so instrumental at the beginning and uh, always nice to see you two in a dialogue it was great discussion because you're doing great work with with peace program thank you yeah it's uh you know as you know i loved every minute of working uh, on the radio show but it, i was getting to the point of exhaustion i had a newborn baby uh, i had peace pilgrim in its infancy as well and um, this was just taking off so quickly. And it was, you know, we were doing live events, one a month. Remember that? Yeah. It, yeah. Like major. I mean, I think the last live event we did was at Universal Studios, right? At yeah. the Hilton. Yeah. And we're to a packed house with like 200 people there or something. It was more, um, than, that, but... more than that. Yeah. Ever the producer. 5,000 people came to that <laughs> one. Unbelievable. Well, that's right. In the spirit of manifestation, uh, 100,000. Yeah. We took over the Wembley Stadium the following week in London. Why not? Because yeah, you, why not? you know why I like to, to talk like that? Because when that happens, that's not only great for us, but it's great for so many people because just like they're going to be saying about the film, they were saying about those live events. How many people left as soon as we were done? None. <laughs> they would stay for yeah. hours. Yeah. The hotels I, would have to kick us all out. I think out. that was, the part, that was the, one of the major uh, reasons for my exhaustion. <laughs> because we did used to leave at about two in the morning and then I had a newborn baby and didn't get any sleep and the next day we'd do it all again. No, it's true, but the reason I brought it up, not because of your exhaustion, was because it was obviously serving people. There was community there. They oh, felt like yeah. that, that, that there were people that understood them. Well, just the, just remember we had the tables where people could come literally uh, sell their wares or inform people of what they were working on. We met some of the most amazing people. You know, we're talking cutting edge. Talk about life changing. Yeah. We're talking about sci-fi, Star yeah. Trek stuff, right? We're, All we're kinds still of gadgets. And, oh, I'm sure you are. Yeah. yeah, I know you are. Yeah, I just, just feel a bit left out now because you know, I don't, I don't. You don't call. You don't write. Well, we write. Yeah, 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 but not to me. Oh, that's yeah. Not. And actually, yeah. um, I, 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 Mark uh, Lejour just has is, uh, has brought some really interesting people coming up real soon here that I'm looking forward to. Uh, we've got some great stuff. We've got David Icke coming up. We've got Greg nice. Braden coming up. Nice. I mean, we're, you know, I should say you helped us get started on the right foot. The people from oh. HeartMath, the Global Coherence Project, which oh, is we're talking about sci-fi. It's really yeah. Science. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I've just seen I've just seen the roster of you know I looked at the website the other day just to I get you know I pop in every now and then obviously, and you've had some amazing guests these last couple of years. It's, yeah, um, it's you know it's really exciting that everyone sees the value in, and then don't you think it just feeds into itself anyway? Because the bigger the name you have, 
and the more important the work, then that becomes part of the energy of the show, you know, the history of the show. Absolutely. And then it helps you get the bigger names because, it's like, we've had this person and that person and that person, and that's when, you know, light starts to attract light. Everything's energy, right? Everything's just magnetic. We and have Meryl Streep next week. Perfect. Well, Congratulating I mean, her on her Oscar. That's amazing. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't have any projects that she's good for right now, but, I mean, uh, if you can get her number, I might need her in the future. We're thinking of doing Peace Pilgrim too, but just uh, the script's a bit of a problem. <laughs> so, so Mark um, Lejeur, uh, you you had I actually not only Heart Math, but there are a couple other people that you've mentioned uh, to me at least that we're going to have on the show that we haven't talked about. But um, of all the people that you know and all that, you wanted Mark on for your like this birthday show, and I thought that was actually really cool. I just thought it'd be a good opportunity to uh, to to get back together. Right, it was a good good reason for us to connect and, and spend some. Some time we don't get to see each other enough these That's days. That's very true. And I see how committed you've been to Peace Pilgrim and, and how things seem to be, um, you know, picking up steam and, mm. and your vision starting to be realized. And, and you know, when you have situations like this where it's a birthday or you know, it's always a kind of a a good reason for it introspection. And I thought it'd be good to get on and connect and talk a little bit and share some of that energy. Definitely. Now I'm glad you thought of me because. It's always too long, you know, in between. Because, you know, I, I see Filippo every now and then. I see Dorothy sometimes. But it's it's been a long time since we were all in the same sure. room together. And, um, I mean, ever since that incident in the cabin. <laughs> there I, was no incident in the it cabin. It took me a long time to forgive Filippo, put if, it that way. <laughs> if there was any incident, it would have been at the Integraton. Well, That's where yeah, an incident Well, would as far have as been. I'm concerned, it was the, you know... When somebody burns pa- pancakes, all right, that's a very it's a very difficult you know that. I, to I'm me, actually trying to remember if I actually burnt a pancake, but I don't think I did. But yeah, but, um, but what's the first stage? But is you it know, denial. The, the the funny thing is, is that you're talking about we're talking about these great projects, right? Mark and I are talking about all these great people that we're having on the show. You're talking about all the work that you're doing with Peace Pilgrim, and you're too meeting some amazing producers and 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 all that. And yet we don't have time for each other. And it's it's interesting. That's how I know we're really trying to put stuff out there for the world. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the ways. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. They said that. I mean, I, I, maybe like, I'll put it out there, you know, on to, to all the listeners and to Mark and Felipe. But do you feel the different energy in 2012? Like all, around the project? Do you feel there's a speed and an ease and... And that, you know, like the manifestation to me seems to be so sudden, almost instantaneous. Yeah, you're seeing, whether it be positive or negative, depending on, on where your where thought process is, but a, a, a quickening of the manifestation. Yeah. Like, and, and But what I've really taken note of is there just seems to be... Um, obviously, a the, the awakening, you know, where you're seeing people that don't even realize that they're looking at things, to, you know, different than what they have typically, mm. or from the perspective that they have typically. Seen right, before. right. You know, of course, there was all the Occupy stuff. You know, this kind of people wanting to stand up for they don't even know what yet, but just right. they need to stand up. But uh, but I think the nuance it goes beyond that now, and so you're starting to see it in, in, in much greater numbers. Yeah, from, from, from my experience, the people I know that I would consider head people are having the toughest time. And the people I would consider heart people or people that feel their way through life are finding a lot of things just opening almost magically. And, uh, you know, like I, I would even say that some, some of my mental friends who are very successful and very wealthy and, you know, they've got all of the material things that you would put, if you pigeonhole them or tick the boxes, you would say they've got the house, you've got the car, you've got the money, but they're actually, it's almost like they're running around like headless chickens simply because they're in their head, mm. you know? Mm. And it's like, and it's the people I meet who are calm tend to be coming from the heart and see, and, and they're wearing a very different filter and they have a very different perspective on the reality. And again, it may be conscious or unconscious because they're just naturally heart people, right? But um, I know this a lot, like uh, the whole, uh, the whole, uh, you know, spectrum of 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 people that I know, be it producers or just people that have their own businesses. It's nothing to do with the entertainment business. But there's definitely a change going on, and I think that's a good thing if the people in their heads start to realize that and get down into their hearts and then start really breathing again. 
You know, and I'm glad you said this because it reminded me of what I said during the monologue about um, it's that kind of arrogance, you know, that that producer said or, or, or that 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 executive said. And, and I'm, I'm thinking um, that that. OK, so maybe that it's true. It We've thought of that as arrogant. But on the other side of the flip side of the coin, they've thought of that maybe as cool. And maybe they've been told, you know, that's cool. You could you could do that, and ha ha, that isn't that cool? And I totally shut him down. And and there are things that we used to think are cool, and now they're not anymore. So there was a time when we used to call people certain names, and now we don't think it's cool to do that anymore. So 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 like if your father or your grandfather said a word, you can go, Dad, we don't really use that word anymore. Well, I don't mean anything by it. Yeah, well, but still, we don't use it. We don't or we don't act that way anymore in this certain age. So maybe this producer, I'm not saying he needs to like fall off the place of the, you know, these people. She's like, maybe they get the hint that that's not really cool anymore. Yeah. And the cool it's an thing awakening, is what you're talking right? about. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's opening up your heart and letting the brain serve its function, letting the mind be a tool, but don't let it, don't let it drive the bus, you know? Let it let it tell you how many miles you need to go and the speed you need to go, but actually drive and have the journey from the heart and let that be the destination in itself. Every moment in your heart is always the destination, right? So I'm finding with Peace Pilgrim, the more, and I think I told you about this, I've met more influential people in the last six months for the Peace Pilgrim project by taking time out off the phone and off the laptop and taking my son to the playground. Right. We talked Remember, about we joked about this yeah. and we said, maybe the playground is a portal. You know, maybe that's where you go down the slide and you enter another, an alternate reality. And this is where, and I'm not kidding you, I'm talking major, major famous people or multi millionaires or billionaires who were there with their children. And we have no idea who we are and we connect through our children and we play through our children. And at the end, we have this really strong edge to share numbers. And it's like, should we stay in touch? Yeah. And we always use the excuse that it'd be a great play date. But then we start emailing each other. So mm-hmm. what do you do exactly? And then we have the adult conversation. But we start from the heart and then we walk, then we come back to the mind. And, you know, we've talked about this for months now, right? When we, we do talk. Well, even more than that. And, and, uh, and always. I mean, wouldn't you know, we're here to talk about Peace Pilgrim and he goes straight to the heart and all this 2012. And that's just, that's just who you are. That, that's why I say there's an extra something you put into this film. But as far as the children are concerned, um, I got the most response of, uh, of any Facebook post that I can recall when uh, a year or something ago, I, mm. I the avocado I, incident, right with with Kingston, he right? had it all over his face. He had all, yeah. all over his face, and and okay. you, you know, and Mark took a, Mark. Mark Skelton took a picture of me and his son together. He, he having avocado all over him, and I posted it on Facebook saying I had a very important meeting with the yeah. mover and a shaker today, and 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 that was Kingston, his two year old son at the time. Yeah, and and. People like absolutely, you get it. You get it, yeah. right on. And Mark's got a two, three, right? Four. 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 Is he four now? He's four now. When was he? Wow. Oh, January the fifteenth, sixteenth. There you go. So you've got these stories too. He call, you know, he'll call and said, "I just had this experience with my son." Who, either it's because they're children. You guys help me with this. Is it because they're children, or are the children tuned into something else right now? Oh, definitely tuned in. I mean, I think all children at all times in the evolution of humanity were more, the most tuned in, tuned in beings of the human race. That's their purpose, right? You know, they're, they're, they're the, they're the net, it's like, you know, look, look at the phone. It's 4S. It's the, five, it's the 5S, whatever you want to call it, right? It's, it's the, just like we do it with technology, it's new and improved. Yeah. Just like the children come through new and improved with, just so you know, they have the software. Kingston uses my laptop faster than I do. And he's two. Kingston's still two. He's not, he's three next month, right? He's a two year old kid and has been doing this. He goes through the fo- he takes photos and videos of himself on the laptop and he goes through the iPhone and literally selects images, finds the game he wants to play and sits there playing the game. It's actually, it's mind boggling when you think about it that they just, they just have the built in software to use whatever Bill Gates had in his mind uh, or, or, or uh, what's his name? Steve. Steve Jobs, uh, rest in peace, or whoever who's coming up with this technology. Right down like, your alley with software. Mm, yeah, 
that's what uh, you know. I'm a, we've talked about this a few different times in the show, but that's uh, that programming aspect that you talk about. I yeah. believe that. Yeah, I think yeah, you you bring forward cell memory and 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 that there is an access to that greater universal mind, that mainframe, yeah, you know, if you will. Yeah, and uh, and so you're right. It's not. I think it's a coupling of the fact that that the software is evolving and upgrading, and consciousness is expanding. Therefore, there's more access to information and more access more quickly to learning. But then beyond that, you have uh, you have the uh, uh, I just lost my train of thought. Well, you had the software. What else would go with the software? The yeah, hardware. You have the the software upgrade, but no. Then it's also the the, the reprogramming that's going on because they're not getting the notes. That's what where I was I was thinking. Is back then when there was a limited uh, perspective or more limited perspective from from parents and grandparents. Mm, You're yeah. getting no, 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 no. Right. More fear based. Whereas now there is a uh, an encouragement in their yeah. learning and an encouragement and an understanding that they're connected and understanding that you know. So it's, I think that you know aware gets more aware. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think so. To go back to your point, Philippe, uh, the children have an awareness, and it's not a conscious an awareness where they have a glint in their eye. It's just their natural state of being. Mm. They're here to play. Mm. They teach you what's important. They help you remember what's important. And if you think you have to be on the phone for two hours trying to make things happen. And then you just surrender and say, you know what? No, I'm going to go to the playground and spend some quality time with my son. And then you bump into a guy who's famous or loaded or connected. or And the, the synchronicities, that's the word we haven't used. The synchronicities. This is the this 2012, for me, has been the year of synchronicity so far, right? Mm. Like beyond, I've always been connected to synchronicity. A lot of that has happened in my life, but never to the extent where it's a daily, sometimes multi-daily. You Actually, know? we all met through synchronicity, and it's funny to... Yeah, where done... is she now? Is she back in Japan? <laughs> synchronicity? Yeah, that was her name, right? <laughs> it's interesting oh. how... Ha, 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 ah, it's it's right. interesting how we can trace Just back... Just trying to lighten the mood a bit, you know? <laughs> if it wasn't for this and it wasn't for that, then we would have met. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. Um, but you know what? I, I, I was thinking... It's at the cabin, right? What are we doing having... Oh, what are we doing having you on the show? We should have had your son. <laughs> you have, well, he's in the other room. He's in the him? other room, actually, and I can hear him, and he's playing, and I can hear that uh, our other friends have arrived, and they're all ready to party. I and think he's playing that we're... beautiful violin you just gave him. <laughs> this, I think he broke the beautiful violin I just gave him, but with that... <laughs> But obviously he's connected. He knows that that's it's supposed to be well, like that. He actually that. has the uh, <laughs> the uh, violin um, iPhone app. Oh, that's you don't need the real thing anymore. You don't need you the just, real you play thing. it with your fingers that's now. Yeah, it's well, like, well, technology. Yeah. Happily, we've had the real thing of enjoying each other's hearts and minds and and voices and and uh, energy today uh, for this show. Uh, thank you, uh, Mark uh, Lejeur, for for inviting Mark Skelton onto the show. Uh, and thank you for having a birthday and thank you Dorothy Donahue for producing the show and Seth uh, Hendricks for engineering and thank you Filippo Voltaggio for being such a great host and so with that I want to thank you I'm so modest (laughs) I want to say thank you all for being part of the show and part of the beautiful world we all wish to see or beautiful changes we all wish to see in the world ciao everyone You have been listening to Life Changes with Filippo with the master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. Listen live every Monday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the BBS Radio Network and visit us online at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. Today's show has been made possible in part by our sponsors, Ionways Water Systems, Change Your Water, Change Your Life, and Love and Miracles with Dorothy Lee Donahue. To learn more about them, visit the sponsor page of our website. Once again, join us here next week as we consciously explore and embrace the only constant, life changes. Change the world. Change the world. Change the world.